Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live broadcast, Understanding of the ICHQ2 Key Validation Characteristics to be Considered for Quality Critical Applications. I am Susie Valdez of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. The work of ICH has significance for pharmaceutical manufacturers globally. Presented as part of the Beckman Coulter Life Sciences Virtual Trade Show event, this webinar will address the key validation characteristics to be considered for quality critical applications according to ICH Q2 guidelines, specifically for online TOC analyzers. The Beckman Coulter Life Sciences Virtual Trade Show is a leading online home of live and on-demand webinar programs, available for viewing anytime. Other webinars in this series cover topics such as flow cytometry, centrifugation, particle counting and characterization liquid handling and robotics, and nucleic acid sample preparation. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on the green Q&A button located at the lower left of the presentation window, type your questions into the box that appear on the screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. Also, notice you're viewing this presentation in a slide window. To enlarge that window, just click on the screen icon located on the lower right. If you have any trouble hearing or seeing the presentation, click on the support button at the top right of the presentation window or use that Q&A button and let us know you're having a problem. I'd now like to introduce today's speaker, Tony Harrison. Tony is a Senior Marketing Manager of Beckman Coulter. Tony earned a bachelor's degree in electrical and electronic engineering and is employed by Beckman Coulter Life Sciences as a senior marketing manager. He has held the conventorship of ISO Working Group, revising ISO 14698, Part 1 and 2, for microbial control in clean rooms and was the UK subject matter expert to the ISO Working Group who issued the 2015 revised versions of ISO 14644 Part 1 and 2 at the heart of the global GMP regulations. A little more about Beckman Coulter. Beckman Coulter serves customers in two segments, diagnostics and life sciences. The company develops manufacturers, markets, products that simplify, automate, and innovate complex analytical testing. More than 275,000 Beckman Coulter systems operate in both diagnostics and life science laboratories over seven continents. Scientists use Beckman Coulter's life science research instruments to study complex biological problems, including causes of diseases and potential new therapies or drugs. Quality control specialists use Beckman Coulter's analytical instrumentation to maintain quality control to the pharmaceutical manufacturing industries. About LabRoots, LabRoots is a leading scientific social networking website which provides daily scientific trending news and science and themed apparel, as well as produces educational virtual events and webinars on the latest discoveries and advancements in science. Contributing to the advancement of science through content sharing capabilities, LabRoots is a powerful advocate in amplifying global networks and communities. I'd now like to turn over the presentation and welcome you to all listening to Tony Harrison. Welcome, Tony. Uh, thank you very much for that introduction, and uh, welcome to everyone watching today. I am Tony Harrison from Beckman Coulter, and I'm going to talk today on validating online TOC analyzers to allow their data to be used for batch release testing in the place of quality control laboratory TOC testing. So it's just a short uh, presentation today. It's about 20 minutes long. Um, and of course, time for questions at the end of it. Uh, but I'm going to introduce the topic first and then take a, a brief look at what TOC analyzers are and how they measure. Then dive into the ICHQ2 characteristics. And then I'll demonstrate uh, how a TOC analyzer can uh, be comply with ICHQ2. And finally, I'll talk about how the uh, PAT700 TOC analyzer from Beckman Coulter demonstrates compliance to ICHQ2. Now, as the pharmaceutical industry seeks to reduce the number and associated costs of quality control laboratory tests, 
reliance on results from the TOC analyzers for product release is becoming more attractive, especially the online TOC analyzers. The International Conference on Harmonization, the ICH, it's an expert working group with representation from the United States, European, and the Japanese pharmacopoeias. In their harmonized tripartite guideline, ICHQ2, which is titled Validation of Analytical Procedures, they outline characteristics for consideration during the validation of analytical procedures included as part of registration applications submitted within the European region, Japan, and the USA. This presentation discusses how these characteristics may be applied to online total organic carbon analyzers to enable them to be used to provide release test data for water for injection and purified water. Now let's take a couple of minutes to go over TOC analyzer technology and what they're actually measuring. TOC analyzers measure one of the four key critical quality attributes mandated by the pharmacopoeias. The other three are inorganic contaminations, which is typically measured using conductivity, endotoxins, which are substances that can act on the patient's hypothalamus and give the patient a fever, and microbes, which of course, if they were injected into a patient, could cause infection. TOC, analyst, uh, sorry, TOC analysis is a non-specific test. And what, do I mean by, what I mean by that is it is simply a measure of the carbon, the amount of carbon found in the organic compounds in the water. It cannot tell you what type of organic molecule is present. A pharmaceutical grade TOC analyzer uses ultraviolet light to oxidize the organic molecules present in the water to release the carbon atoms and then measures the difference in water conductivity caused by the resultant carbon dioxide. TOC is to be calculated according to the pharmacopoeias by measuring total inorganic carbon and total carbon and then subtracting one from the other to calculate TOC. So TC minus TIC equals TOC. All online pharmaceutical grade TOC analyzers use ultraviolet light to oxidize the organic molecules and release the carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. The European chapter 2.2.44 on TOC analysis in the European Pharmacopoeia emphasizes the importance of complete oxidation of the organic contamination in order to release all of the carbon atoms and get an accurate TOC measurement. If, if the molecule is not completely oxidized, carbon molecules, sorry, carbon atoms can remain trapped inside the organic molecule and these will not be measured, so you'll under-report TOC. So if a TOC analyzer is to be used for product release testing data, then it should follow the requirements of ICHQ2 in just the same way as a laboratory QC TOC analyzer must. This, this slide shows the characteristics recommended in the ICHQ2. The guideline ICHQ2 covers three different applications for analyzers. Analyzers used for identification, analyzers using, used for testing for impurities, and assay tests. TOC analyzers used to test purified water and water for injection for contamination naturally fall under the testing for impurities category. ICHQ2 goes on to differentiate between the validation characteristics required for those TOC analyzers used for limit testing of impurities and those used for quantitative analysis of impurities. Now, online TOC analyzers have the purpose, of course, of determining that the compendial limit of 500 ppb of TOC is not breached, but they're also used for trending TOC levels, and as such, they fall under the scope of the validation characteristics required to both quantitative testing and limit testing analyzers. Now, whilst robustness is not listed in the, in the list on the screen here, uh, ICHQ2 does recommend this aspect of validation is tested during initial qualification of the analyzer and at suitable periods thereafter. 
Now let's take a look at how POC analyzers can be tested to demonstrate compliance to ICHQ2 requirements. ICH2, sorry, ICHQ2 suggests that accuracy may be established by determining the closeness of agreement between the analyzer and an accepted reference standard. For TOC analyzers, this can be achieved by carrying out a calibration validation, i.e. by running certified TOC standards as grab samples and determining if the results provided by the analyzer are within accepted or specified performance limits. Naturally, the analyzer should have had a calibration adjustment before carrying out this test, i.e. the normal calibration adjustment procedure recommended by the manufacturer should have been carried out to make sure the analyzer is accurate as possible. ICHQ2 suggests that accuracy, accuracy should be demonstrated using three replicates each of three different concentrations, as is shown on this graph. Now, the validation of analyzers for quantitation of impurities includes an investigation of precision. ICHQ2 recommends the determination of precision of repeat, repeat, repeatability be validated again using three replicates each of three certified standards at different concentrations. It also recommends that steps are taken to reduce the opportunities for human error to impact on intermediate precision of the analyzer such as automation of standard operating procedures and elimination of manual data entry and manual calculations. The specificity test establishes the analyzer ability to measure the analyte of interest in the presence of potentially interfering substances. Now, in the case of a modern purified water or water for injection system, the challenge TOC analyzers face is that the TOC levels are relatively small, often less than 30 parts per billion, whereas the levels of total inorganic carbon and total carbon are comparatively high. Somewhere between 1,000 ppb and 2,000 ppb is quite common. TOC analyzers measure total inorganic carbon and total carbon and then calculate the TOC. So small errors in measuring the total carbon and the inorganic carbon can lead to big errors in the calculated TOC. Now this problem is most notable in TOC analyzers that have separate sensors to measure total carbon and inorganic carbon. In the example shown on the screen here, small errors in the measurement of the total carbon and total inorganic carbon lead to a reported variation in TOC which could be anywhere between minus 30 ppb and plus 50 ppb. So you can see how small errors in those measurements can lead to big errors in the reported TOC levels. As far as detection limits concern, the pharmacopeia state that suitable TOC analyzers must have a detection limit of less than or equal to 50 parts per billion of TOC. Now, validating such a low level of TOC is difficult using traceable TOC standards as these are generally not available at such low levels. Equally, attempting to make your own TOC solution at 50 ppb, it's just not practical. It's too small. ICHQ2 suggests an alternative is to calculate the limit of detection by running multiple samples from a blank TOC solution. Now, in the pharmacopoeias, a blank TOC solution is defined as having less than 100 parts per billion of TOC and then using the standard deviation between the measurements to calculate the limit of detection. Quantitation limit has the same similar challenge as limit of detection. Quantitation limit is defined as the lowest level of TOC that the analyzer can accurately measure and report TOC values. Like the limit of detection, this can be difficult to establish using traceable certified standards as these are generally not available at these very low levels. So ICHQ2 suggests an acceptable method to validate this characteristic is by running multiple analyses of blank samples and using the standard deviation to count, calculate the quantitation limit. Now, if you looked at the two formulas, one for limit of detection and one for limit of quantitation, you can see that the limit of quantitation is approximately three times the detection limit. 
Now, as far as linearity is concerned, you can use calibration for this. And there are two types of calibration. The International Standards Organization, ISO, defines calibration as a validation of an instrument against known certified calibration standards. A calibration adjustment, however, using three certified calibration standards can also be used to determine linearity, which here on this slide is expressed as R squared. Our pharmaceutical grade TOC analyzers are designed to demonstrate that the 500 parts per billion TOC limit defined in the pharmacopoeias has not been exceeded. So the acceptable range of a pharmaceutical TOC analyzer is established by confirming that the analytical procedure provides an acceptable degree of linearity, accuracy, and precision when applied to samples containing amounts of TOC within or at the extremes of the specified range of the analytical procedure. As the specified maximum allowable TOC level is 500 parts per billion, then the linearity, accuracy, and precision must be demonstrated around this maximum 500 ppb point. Now, the robustness characteristic is used to demonstrate the reliability of an analyzer with respect to deliberate variations in method parameters. Now, for TOC analyzers, the United States and European pharmacopoeias suggest that this is established using the system suitability test, where the analyzer's response to TOC standards in deliberately varied organic materials is tested to ensure there's no large variation in reported TOC results. Solutions of easily oxidized sucrose and difficult to oxidize benzoquinone, both containing 500 parts per billion of carbon, are analyzed on the TOC analyzer. To demonstrate that the analyzer is robust, the reported results from both the uh, system suitability test solutions must be within plus or minus 15% of each other. So let's finish off today's pre short presentation by showing how the uh, PAT 700 TOC analyzer from Beckman Coulter can be shown to comply with the requirements of ICHQ2. So this is the table of the um, characteristics from ICHQ2 and how the PAT 700 can be demonstrated to be in compliance. The PAT 700 is designed to support compliance to ICHQ2. A combination of three calibration standards with triple samples each satisfies the requirements for accuracy, repeatability, linearity, and range, whereas triple samples from TOC blanks satisfies both the detection limit and the quantitation limit calculations. Manual data entry and manual calculations are limited through, eliminated sorry, through automated SOPs, and robustness is demonstrated through the mandated system suitability test. The PAT700 employs a unique single set sensor measurement technology, which allows the PAT700 to maintain specificity and avoid any interferences from high levels of TIC. Now, you should now be seeing an opportunity to register to receive my white paper on this topic on your screens. So that concludes my short presentation today. Um, I'd be happy to take any questions from the audience. Thank you, Tony, for that informative presentation. And we will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window, type your question into the box that appears on the screen, and click that Send button. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for. So let's take a look at what our audience questions, the ones that are coming in already. Tony, our first question is, why is it important to validate an online TOC analyzer to ICHQ2? Now, thank you for that question. So basically, if an online analyzer data is to be used to reduce the financial burden of QC laboratory testing, or by using it to provide release data, then really it should be validated as completely as the laboratory TOC analyzer would be. So ICHQ2 provides sufficient evidence acceptable to the regulatory inspectors from the United States, the European, and the Japanese regulatory bodies, 
allowing the online analyzer data to reduce or eliminate the need for QC lab TOC testing. So that's why it's important. Thank you. And our next question coming in, how does having single sensor technology help the PAT 700 avoid interference from high levels of total inorganic carbon? Well, thank you for that one. The, the issue really is that a, a modern water treatment plant using reverse osmosis to manufacture the water tends to concentrate the levels of carbon dioxide dissolved in the water. So they tend to have elevated levels of total inorganic carbon. And the problem occurs in analyzers that use two separate sensors to measure total carbon and total inorganic carbon, where a small drifting calibration between these two sensors can lead to measurement errors which will impact on the accuracy of the reported or calculated total organic carbon. So what the PAT 700 does is it traps an aliquot of the water sample, it measures the total inorganic carbon using the sensor, and then it oxidizes the sample and measures the total carbon with the same sensor. So any drift in this single sensor calibration will affect both total and inorganic carbon and total carbon results equally. So it cancels out the effect of any drift. Thank you. And I want to thank our audience today for tuning in to this live webinar. Tony, we have one more question coming from our audience. How does that PAT 700 avoid the effects of human error on the intermediate precision as mentioned in ICHQ2? Now, thank you for that one. So, yeah, a human error, particularly in calibration and system suitability tests, is arguably uh, the biggest problem. So the PAT eliminates manual data entry and manual calculations, which are arguably the biggest source of human error in the QC world. Uh, the calibration and system suitability standard bottles carry an RFID tag, which allows the PAT 700 to recognize the standards and upload and read their certified value and check their use by date. So that eliminates the manual uh, data entry. And then the PAT 700 has automated SOPs programmed in to allow it to carry out the prescribed tests, such as uh, calibration and system suitability, and then calculate automatically the pass-fail result. So there's no manual uh, data transcription of results as data is exported via Ethernet using password-protected PDF files through the secure file transfer protocol. So we completely remove the opportunity for human error. Thank you very much, Tony. And would you like to go ahead and provide the audience with some closing remarks before we close today? Just to say thank you to everybody for listening to this short presentation. Uh, I appreciate it. I hope you found it valuable. Thank you. And before I go, I want to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Beckman Coulter, for making today's educational webcast possible. I'd also like to remind audience members that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing this month. You will receive an email from LabRoots letting you know when the webcast will be available for replay. Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. That's all for now, and thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.